we heard about uh, Python implementations, Rust, uh, Scala implementations, and now I'm going to tell you why a Go implementation is even better, right? <laughs> so it's that's a f it's fairly easy. You mean even slower, right? <laughs> Look at this guy. We have the best logo, right? <laughs> yeah, so Go, it, the gopher is just so cute, so why wouldn't you like Go? It's uh, definitely the best logo, for sure. Uh, other than that, um, LND is built in Go. It's pure Go, which is pretty nice. I'm going to tell you a bit about it. Uh, Go is a nice language in, for many reasons. One of them is uh, that it has very nice tooling. Uh, the tools, uh, and it supports a lot of targets. You can run it on a bunch of different platforms, so make it easy to what I'm going to talk about today, like running it on mobile devices, specifically iOS and Android. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. So this is like a high level, very high level overview of how LMD is built. So you have, you have like obviously the core uh, LMD modules, uh, and one of those modules is like a RPC server, and we have also something called uh, subservers, which is basically like optional RPC servers. So we have like this pretty massive uh, API that you can access uh, when you run LMD. And this is wrapped in what's called gRPC, which is like a standard for making APIs, uh, RPC APIs. So it is, in my opinion, very nice. It's much better than, let's say, a JSON API, because it's just from a proto, like a gRPC spec, it will automatic, automatically create uh, APIs that's supported by a bunch of different languages. So whatever language you're using, as long as it supports like the gRPC, uh, some G gRPC library, you can connect very easily to LND. And of course, on top of this gRPC interface, you can build your Lightning application. Uh, at the bottom, we have the chain backend. So this is basically, LND needs to talk or know something about the Bitcoin chain. So we support several ones, I think, maybe I'm having here, yeah. So LND supports BTCD and Bitcoin D over an RPC interface. Uh, so that basically means you have your own Bitcoin node being a Bitcoin D or BTCD, and LMD will connect to it and get everything it needs from uh, that uh, Bitcoin fill node. Uh, we also support something called Neutrino, which is an implementation we have of uh, BIP157. Uh, so this is a new kind of light client. We, somebody touched about, uh, upon it earlier. Uh, the nice thing about Neutrino, uh, and specifically the int implementation we are maintaining, is that it's a pure uh, Go library. It's all written in Go, which means it has no dependencies on other like uh, binary blobs or anything. So you can compile everything from source. Everything is in Go. Uh, the same with LND. So you have like this full stack uh, of from top to bottom with pure Go code, and that's, this makes makes it easy to compile the whole stack for a bunch of different uh, uh, operating systems and platforms and targets, uh, as long as the Go compiler supports uh, this, this target. All right, so uh, running LMD on mobile. So as mentioned, uh, on mobile, since it's like a limited device, um, limited memory, limited bandwidth, more or less, uh, it makes sense to use Neutrino. It's, it's as instead of a full node, right? Uh, you could use a full node. I know, like on Android, you have AB Core. Uh, you probably have something similar on iOS. Uh, so if you have, like, I don't know, an unlimited data plan or something, and unlimited battery, if that exists, then you can run a full node on your phone. But I think it makes sense to run Neutrino, since it's a light client, and you can get started on a regular phone with, like, regular hardware. And I mentioned that Go is nice because it has like a very nice set of official uh, tooling. So one of these tools are, it's a tool called Go Mobile. And Go Mobile is just a wrapper around the Go compiler that takes your Go code, uh, compiles it into uh, the given, like a bunch of mobile targets, and then it adds uh, wrappings like APIs for Objective-C and Java on top. So given like, some Go module you have with a Go API, it will take this Go API and convert it into like a library. You can just put into some iOS or Android app, and it has, uh, and it comes with JV, uh, Java and Objective-C APIs. 
OK, so I'm going to show you this now. Uh, so let's go here. I'll just do make iOS. So this is, uh, yeah, let me show you this. So this is basically, uh, this is, um, this is uh, LND. I don't know if you, um, you know the code base, but when you start LND, you basically, we have a main function that gets called. So this is just, can you see this, by the way? Is it big enough? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, so very simple. When you start LND on your, your desktop, if you're familiar with it, you just call this main method and it gets started. So we do something similar on, on mobile. So I have like a very simple uh, binding here. It's like a mobile package which has a start method that I created. Uh, and this is all that it, that's, this is the only thing that's needed uh, in theory to just like get LND running on your phone. It has a start method. I start, I call the main method of LND in a go routine. So it, this won't block. So it's just like in some thread, that's not the main thread, start this, start this main method. Okay. So this is the only change that is needed to get LND running. Uh, I did call like make iOS here and it will call the, if you can see this, let's make it even bigger. This will call the Go, Mob Go Mobile tool on the target iOS. Uh, some random things you don't have to care about. Create this LND mobile framework and compile this package, GitHub Lightning Network LND slash mobile. And that was the package you just saw with the start method that, um, that calls main, basically. And this will create this, this framework. So let's open and look at this framework. Okay, here we go. So we have an iOS folder here with the framework. And I have, like, of course, a test app uh, running in Xcode. So I'll start the simulator here. This is just a simple app that has two buttons. Uh, it's nothing else. It creates two buttons, and I can click these buttons, and they will say, like, button clicked and button two clicked. So now I'm going to just take this API or this framework that was built by Go Mobile. I'm going to drag it into this project. I'm copying it in, and here you go. There's some, uh, can you see this, by the way? Can I, maybe I can, okay. It's there, it's like, uh, the framework is imported into the, into the IDE. Uh, I'll import it here, and I'll, when button one is clicked, I'm gonna call the method we just defined, which is uh, the start method, right? No arguments for, for now. And then there's this callback that's also defined in this uh, package, which is like, uh, when this method returns a result, where do you want this uh, result to be delivered? And this is also like defined uh, in the Go code. Uh, so I'll just create like a new class here called, just call it callback for now. Uh, and it will implement this LND mobile callback protocol. And since, of course, uh, Xcode is the, okay, just do now a callback. <coughs> since Xcode is the best IDE in the world, it will just ask you if you want to fix this implementation. So it will add it, of course. And that was a joke. Okay, so a response for now, we just want it to start, so we just print response here. Okay, so let's try to compile this app. So I just took LND that was compiled by GoMobile, uh, dragged it into, into uh, this app, and said that when I press button one, it's gonna start LND. So let's do it. Okay, it failed. So load config says that either Bitcoin active or Litecoin active must be activated. So we need to tell LND about some uh, mandatory config flags. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna set uh, Bitcoin active, and I think you need to set uh, um, testnet active, and then I have, of course, I have copied this in case I 
just needed a bunch of things that worked. So we're going to set Bitcoin active. We're going to set it to run on testnet. We're going to set it because now we don't need to like store our seed. I'm going to say no seed backup and no macaroons. So kids, don't do this. Um, we're going to set it to run with Neutrino as a backend. And we're going to set it to run one of the one of the nodes I know serve Neutrino filters. So it doesn't have to look. All right. So let's try again. I call the same one. I just provide it with this uh, config arguments so it knows what to start. OK, press button one, and it starts syncing. So LND starts, it runs, and it will, when it connects to uh, some full node serving filters, it will start um, syncing. So that's how easy it is to get started with running LND on our mobile platform. So this is on, this is on iOS, obviously, but you could also you could also do it on Android. It's more or less the same. It will create Java APIs that you call the same way. All right. So know that we have uh, LND running on, on the phone. We need a way to communicate with this process. So LND has, as I mentioned, a gRPC interface uh, that we could, that you can use on desktop. Uh, so we would need some way to call this API from our mobile app. And there are several ways of doing this. And we tried, I tried a bunch of stuff. So the, the, the nice thing about LND is like, uh, it actually spins up this, uh, this gRPC uh, listener uh, by itself, even on mobile. So you could, you could communicate with this uh, mobile app as it was running on desktop. So I could, uh, from remote, I could connect to my phone uh, using CLI and then communicate with it, or I could, like in my app, I could set up a gRPC client and I could start communicating with it. The problem, though, is that uh, especially iOS is not very happy about these sockets uh, that are created by the, the mobile app. So you run into a bunch of issues if you start running LND on your phone, uh, you spin up this gRPC server that are listening for connections, uh, maybe you go into the background and the OS will try to like clean up everything your app is doing. It will pause the app and it will like take your socket you open, it will reclaim them, and when you and when you restart the app again, everything will crash because like the, the OS just removed a bunch of stuff that's required for the gRPC connection to stay alive. So you would have to do like a lot of extra reconnection lo logic. It will break what we call streaming uh, APIs in gRPC which are APIs where you can like set up a listener for some event and it will just like stream it to you when the event comes in. So the second thing we tried was doing using Unix sockets, but this is not stable at all. Uh, Apple specifically says that this is not supported and you shouldn't do it. And that was the case, it was not stable. Uh, so that was also uh, a failure. Uh, using REST APIs, you can do, it's kind of the similar thing as gRPC, but instead of uh, communicating uh, with the gRPC server over TCP, you can uh, actually use uh, the REST server that, GR, uh, that LND spins up. Um, and this is, this is uh, more stable, uh, in my experience, than using a gRPC, but it's not easy to work with the uh, streaming APIs. It has some problems with going into the background as well, and it's REST. So you lose all the benefits of having like a nice gRPC interface to your app. Okay, so what you could do is like, like I did with the main method, I created like a new Go method that uh, Go Mobile would understand and convert to a Java or, or Objective-C method. So you could do the same with all the APIs in LND. They're all, um, uh, they're all defined using, using G, uh, like the gRPC spec specification, the protocol, protobuf uh, specification, and then they are like implemented by the LND RPC server. So what you could do is to replicate, uh, replicate all the gRPC APIs as like Go methods that are supported by Go Mobile, and then call directly into the, GR, into the RPC server. But this is, it has some problems. First off is that Go Mobile only supports like a limited set of types because it wants to work on different platforms. It has to decide on like a few primitive types that we support. Uh, and it's also, so this makes it hard because you have to like change a bunch of the, the already existing types we use over the, over the, uh, in the API. 
Uh, it would take a lot of work, of course, because you have to replicate everything, and every, every time you add a new method or change the API, you would have to like, uh, change this uh, replication in the uh, mobile-specific bindings. And also, uh, streaming APIs across the, the boundary between the languages are not trivial, so we need to do some magic there. Okay, so the last one here is like gRPC over an in-memory socket. So uh, this is actually pretty nice because the gRPC server running in LND, it doesn't have, it doesn't need to know where this incoming connection is coming from. So right now, it's usually it's just like a TCP connection connecting to the server, but you can actually set up like uh, in-memory buffer for this connection. So you would like LND would just see this listener, it will look at the data that's coming and wouldn't care about where the data is coming from. So using uh, gRPC over such like an in-memory buffer is actually uh, uh, is pretty nice. The problem is that's not supported by most languages. So uh, I could set up this listener in LND and I could have a client in, on iOS, but the problem is that the iOS client doesn't support using such an in-memory buffer to communicate with the server. And I think Java, you could hack it, uh, you, could, you could do some magic there to make it work, but especially on, in Objective-C and in Swift on iOS, it was, it's not easy. So what, what to do? Well, solution we came up with is like some kind of hybrid between the, the last two uh, methods here. So we, uh, we basically, since uh, the API is is uh, defined by the RPC or by the protobuf spec. It's fairly easy to create a protobuf plugin that just parses this API and auto -gener generates some APIs for you. Uh, this is basically what is done when uh, all these languages are getting uh, like are creating like a, a gRPC client. So we do something similar. We uh, parse the we parse the protobuf uh, specification, the gRPC specification, and we create a, a Go API that has that is supported by Go Mobile. So we make sure that this, what we create is supported by Go Mobile. And then behind this API, we set up such an, um, a gRPC client with an in-memory buffer. And why do we cr use this in-memory buffer gRPC client? Well, uh, there's all, we need almost no changes to LND. The only thing is that we need a layer on top of LND that creates this uh, uh, in-memory buffer uh, gRPC client and calls LND and then the APIs that are using this client. So it comes out pretty, uh, pretty nicely. Okay, so let's look at the stack, how it will look like after we, after we build, uh, uh, build LND using these tools. So as before, we have this stack up to the gRPC interface. We have the chain backend, which is now Neutrino. Why Neutrino? I mentioned it makes, makes sense as a light client, and also it's pure Go, so everything from here on down is pure Go and is supported by the Go compiler, which is very nice. Then from the, from the RPC proto spec, uh, we have created like a plugin to, to create this Golang API uh, that just calls into the gRPC interface of LND. And then we call Go Mobile, which is a tool supported by the Golang libraries, the Golang uh, compiler, that takes this Golang API and just create mobile bindings for them and packages them into like a, a iOS and an Android library. And that's all you need to like just get this into your, your mobile app. Okay, so let's, let's try this. Um, or we can first look at the generated API because it's here. So uh, I have like this lightning API. This is generated by the, the protobuf uh, or the gRPC uh, plugin. So it takes like, let's look at the simple API as get info. So get info just takes a message uh, as, as a slice of bytes. And the reason we do this is because we need primitive types and it's just much easier to reuse the GR, the protobuf specification because it's just a serialization format. So we just use the, um, the, the protobuf uh, serialized messages, put them into a byte array and then give this to this uh, uh, this method, uh, because this is supported by Go Mobile. Bytes are a primitive types that supported. And then this will just call, uh, this, this handler will call the gRPC client uh, on LND, give it the message, and wait for, wait for a message to come back, 
or a result and then call this callback. That's the protocol, that's the callback protocol we, we defined. Okay, so let's try using this in this app. So when I call button two, I will call get, get info. So only mobile, get info. There's some data here. Uh, that's fine, callback. We already defined a callback protocol here. So let's copy that and just call, just call it here. Okay, so what do we provide to get info? Well, as I mentioned, it's, a, it's like just like a slice of bytes and it's not any slice of bytes, it has to be like a well-formed proto message. So what we do is we do, we uh, get this, this message from, it will be Elni Mobile, get info, uh, get info request. Let's see, LND mobile, get info. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, this was my next point actually, it's not here. So, uh, why doesn't Xcode or why doesn't Swift, because this is Swift, why doesn't it know about this format? Well, it's not defined for Swift, so we have to do something clever. But the, the nice thing about gRPC and Protobuf is that it supports a wide variety of languages. So we now, from, from LND's specification, we're gonna create these, these, these types that we need. So by going into the LNRPC uh, folder, we'll find the, the proto compiler. This is where we create the API from the RPC spec of LND. So I'm just gonna add uh, a Swift output here because that's what I need. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna just compile the RPC, and hopefully we should have a new file. Yeah, so we have this new file. It's a Swift file. And once again, we're gonna take this file, and we're just gonna drag it into our project. The only Swift files, so it has to be this one. We drag it in, and there we go. So this is the whole, uh, everything we need in Swift for, for this application to be able to understand the data that LND is communicating because it's just compiled from the uh, LNRPC protos. Okay, so now I should be able to find this, this type. Uh, LNRPC get info request, that's the one I want. Okay, and now, uh, this is an actual Swift object, so I need to serialize this object to use it. So I'm just gonna do B, I probably need to do something like this. Serialize data and try, a hard try, never do this of course, never do what I do. And then it should be able to compile. But also we need to look at the response coming from, API, from LND, so we need to do something similar with the response when we get it. So we get, also we get like just a slice of byte uh, as a response. So we also need to uh, deserialize this slice of bytes. So again, I'm gonna do uh, LNRPC, get info response this time. And then I have the serialized data, so I'm just gonna pass it this, this object that I get from the callback. And I'm probably gonna have to do something like this again. And then I'm just gonna print it and see how it looks. Okay, so compile and run again. Uh, start LND. Right now you see it's starting up. Uh, it'll get some blocks. It will start syncing basically. Oh, let's go to the bottom here. Uh, and then we'll call this uh, button two, which will print a very familiar get info response coming from LND. Yeah, so this is basically everything you need to get started with uh, LND running on uh, iOS and on Android. So that's one of the powers with the Golang stack because the compiler supports like a lot of targets and the tooling is, in my opinion, very, very good. 
you, it's very, well, it was very easy to get started with LMD running on mobile. All right, so I think, do I have more slides? No, I don't have more, that's, that's all I got. Uh, this is a, a screenshot of the app we're developing ourselves, which uses this stack, uh, as, so it will run on Android and iOS, uh, uh, having LMD, a full LMD <coughs> node uh, backed by Neutrino on the phone. Uh, and when is this coming to mainnet? Where? Well, soon, hopefully. Uh, we have it running on, on, um, on desktop, on mainnet, the same code base, more or less, but instead of having like this Go mobile backend, we use uh, like an actual LMD node uh, uh, communicating over RPC. But the front end code is ex the exact same code. Uh, the only thing is like how you communicate with the backend with the LMD, LMD node running there. So pretty powerful in my opinion. And I can take questions. Yes. Can, can it run as a service? Like uh, completing the background and uh, monitoring channels and all the stuff that LMD is doing? Uh, you could do that uh, within certain limitations, right? So on Android, you have the possibility to do that. They've been restricting more and more over the years because of battery concerns. So back in the days, you can run like whatever you wanted on Android and it would run in the background and drain your battery. Now, I think the rule is that you have to like show a notification in a notification center that says, says that this is running such that the user could just swipe it away and kill it. Uh, on iOS, this is not even possible. You cannot run anything in the background. Uh, there's like certain tasks, but certainly not something like a Bitcoin node in the background. Uh, so no, uh, it's not easy. You need to make sure you design the application from a perspective where it will go offline a lot, basically. Yes? Uh, would the app always run with the in-memory LMD, or can you also connect it to a regular LMD node? Uh, there's nothing that, uh, there's nothing like in the stack that doesn't let you use an uh, uh, remote LND, but we have designed it, designed this for uh, running everything on your phone. So obviously, you could take the take the app and just change a few files, I guess, and then connect it to a remote LND. But it uses the exact same API uh, because we just created it from the from the proto spec. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, just it it all comes down to where do I like the serialized proto buff? Where do I send it? Do I send it to like an in-memory buffer, or do I send it over some TCP connection to some remote server? And where do you keep the data directory? Like, how secure is it? It is uh, it's in the sandbox on the mobile device. Do so, yes. So where do we store the data uh, from the like the data LMD needs? So we just it just uses the default uh, directory for the mobile app on the phone. So it'll, it'll be sandboxed on both uh, iOS and Android. Yes? Uh, how do you keep, like, what, when you start the app, uh, one thing I always notice is like, um, if you want to just scan something and pay it, like, it, 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 there's often like this ballot overhead for yeah. like, the running information or other stuff. How, how, how fast do you think is that's going to be ready as soon as you open the app if you haven't opened it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually the first thing that needs to be done when you, yeah, so how fast would it be to like start the app if, you, if it's been online for a few weeks, you want to pay something, how fast is it to just start the app and pay? Uh, so I would say the first thing that needs to be done by Neutrino is like catching up uh, to the current chain to check if, whether my channels are still open or not. So uh, that's pretty fast with the BIP157 protocol. You can like re request a range of uh, like headers and you'll get them pretty quickly. So that's just like a few seconds in my, uh, in my experience for like a few weeks of blocks. Um, and then you have to like, you have all this gossip data you need to handle, right? But the thing to, the thing to like realize about gossip data is that it's just like an approximation of what, what the network look like. So you might even be able to make a payment with two months old uh, uh, graph data because maybe that's good enough. Maybe nothing has changed with the, those channels you care about. So you could actually try with that old data while you sync up with the, the newest set of the new data. The new data will, 
when it gets to you, it might be up, uh, out of date anyway, and that happens all the time, but it doesn't matter as long as your graph is like more or less correct. All right. Are no. there wallets that do that already, what you just said? Sorry. Are there wallets that do that already, yours or Eclair or so? I don't think so, right? So the question was whether any wallets are syncing the graph this way or? No, uh, trying the payments before the graph is really synced, so trying to. Yeah, so the thing, yeah, so the question is are wallets today trying to make payments uh, before it's fully synced? Um, I can't talk for Eclair and everything, but I guess you don't even, there's no such thing as being fully synced, right? You never know when your graph is fully synced. You get data all the time. You never know when it's gonna stop. You never know when you have all the data. So it's, there's no such thing as being in f fully in sync with the graph. So what you have at the point you wanna pay, that's what you should try. And if you're lucky, it works because it's up to date enough for it to work or um, if not, maybe you have gotten some new data you can use for the next attempt. Yes? Um, if I understand correctly, um, to have the Neutrino connect to a Bitcoin, Bitcoin the backend, the, the backend node also needs to implement uh, some Neutrino uh, codes, right? Yes. Uh, isn't that going to be a problem, like you say, the Neutrino soon, but uh, if people want to run this as an SVP client, that there are not many nodes on the network who already support it? Yeah, so the question is, for us to run Neutrino on the phone, we need some full node to connect to that supports serving Neutrino filters to us. And as you say, it's uh, Bitcoin Core, uh, at least like master Bitcoin Core doesn't support this. Uh, but we have something called BTCD, which is an alternative Bitcoin node implementation that supports this by now. So there's not a lot of uh, no full nodes uh, uh, out there that supports uh, Neutrino. So hopefully it will get more over time. Um, so I think it's uh, just for people to realize they're helping uh, a lot of mobile clients when a Neutrino gets more widespread that they should serve um, Neutrino filters to serve, to help, help the network that way. Yeah. Okay, yes. The request feature creates an invoice, I guess, so is it relying on the mobile watchtower features that are already being so the question was whether this app requires a watchtower, right? Yes. And no, it doesn't require a watchtower. Uh, so this is just like a, uh, it's running like a pure LND node. So whatever you do with LND, this is more or less the same. Uh, so you need to be careful about, if you know that you're gonna go offline a lot, then probably the CSV or the, like the timeout on your channels shouldn't be super short because you need to like come online often enough for you to actually check whether your channel is still open such that nobody can breach you. Uh, but as you mentioned, for mobile devices, they're probably gonna go offline more often than like a server type a node. So in that case, uh, watch hours are gonna be uh, more important. And we have like watch hours in the pipeline. My guess is it's gonna be out by maybe the next release, which is in, yeah, sometimes this month, probably. Uh, so then we can like start iterating and creating actually usable watch hours, and that's going to help mobile devices a lot, of course. How do you start it with a fast phrase? Sorry? How do you start LMD with a fast phrase? Uh, on mobile. mobile. Yeah. So in this case, as you probably saw, I passed the flag no seed backup to like avoid all that. Uh, but it's the same thing. The password. Uh, we have something called the Waller, Wallet Unlocker Service in LND, which is a gRPC interface for unlocking the wallet. So exact same way as we're generating the, uh, the APIs for LND, the regular LND APIs, we create these Wallet Unlocker APIs and we call them the same way. So when your app starts up and wants to start LND, it will start LND and then call uh, the Wallet Unlocker API with the password. That you can think back the seed. That call? Only on the first call. The first call. Yeah. And then you can, you should write this down, of course, and also the password will, uh, at least on iOS, you can store it in the secure enclave of the phone, which is pretty nice. Yes? Who develops and maintains GoMobile? GoMobile? Yeah. It's, Go, uh, it's Google. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes? What's the performance cycle? 
of the perf performance. Okay, so what the question is, uh, how performant is the BCD full node? So it's definitely not as performant as Bitcoin Core, but I think that's mostly because it has less attention, less uh, uh, contributions, and yeah, less, uh, um, let's say, spent less time on optimizing the code. But it, it has gotten a lot better, so uh, I'm, yeah, uh, on decent hardware, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be days to sync, maybe a day or so. It's my guess. I haven't synced in a while, fortunately. Is it something you're investing in, like lightning labs, assuming? I, I, I think if we need to wait longer for Bitcoin D to support serving neutrino filters, and we, uh, a lot of people want to run neutrino nodes, so to make it easier for people to run BCD, probably it's a good idea to spend uh, more resources, resources on actually optimizing initial block download on BCD. But I don't think it's a problem right now. I think it's pretty good. It has gotten a lot better. It's just predominantly Lave working on it, or other people? Uh, there are several people working on it, yeah. Cool. Any more questions, or we go on to the next one? Okay, thank you.